Yeah. Okay. okay, hi everyone. Um, the topic of my talk tonight is machine learning with JavaScript. Um, just to give you a brief, brief background to myself, uh, my name is Andre de San Miguel. I'm uh, currently a student at UQ uh, and uh, hoping, to some way, hoping someday to become a decent developer and data scientist. Uh, email's there and uh, my GitHub is there as well if you would like to have a look at some of the uh, code examples that I showed later in the, in the talk. In terms of the, um, the motivation, behind this, motivation behind this talk, I, one, of the, one of the things I'm doing at university at the moment is a thesis project on machine learning. And I don't actually do it in JavaScript, I do it in another programming language called R. And I thought, okay, for shits and giggles, wonder what would happen if I try to program the stuff that I do in R in JavaScript to see how it performed and what it was like to use. So this, this talk is kind of like a, uh, a result of that. Um, so in terms, of, um, in terms of the problems that I saw with, uh, with R is that, first of all, it's not, not, particularly, um, not particularly good for web-based consumption. Like, say for example, if I was to take this, some of my work and then try and publish it on the web, um, R is not particularly crash off for that, whereas I see JavaScript uh, to be a great, a great way to do that. So my goal, my goal here was to find a way to display results um, from machine learning problems using a web-based tool. And so let, let's have a look at what I used. Oh, on today's talk, um, essentially what I'm doing is running through my experiences uh, implementing machine learning in JS. Uh, in particular, I'll look at some visualization comparisons uh, calculation times and ease of ease of implementation. Uh, but first, I thought I would start with a primer. Um, as I don't know what um, everyone's what the common base is in terms of machine learning, um, I thought I'd put up a brief definition here. Um, and the first definition: machine learning focuses on the development of pro computer programs. Uh, blah blah blah. Um, I didn't actually like that definition because it implies a lot of AI elements that actually aren't there in your common machine learning problem. Uh, in most cases, machine learning problems are just using, they're just prediction using models of data relationships. And so I've just got, a, as an example of that, can everyone see that okay? Well, kind of, yeah. Uh, as an example of that, what I've got is a fairly contrived problem or a fairly contrived example where I've got on the x-axis of this, of this chart, the weight of, in this case, I've chosen fruits, and on the y-axis is the price of those fruits. And I've got two, two different fruits, pears and blueberries. So in a machine learning example would be, say for example, if I had a, um, a fruit that weighed two kilo, or one kilogram and was priced at four bucks, what then would be that, how would you then classify that into which group? So how would that then be classified? And we can obviously do that like fairly, we can look at it and do it ourselves, but then what happens, what machine learning is more concerned about is then what happens when the, when the problem gets more complicated. So in terms of, in terms of the options I considered at the start when I was looking at, looking at solving this problem, um, there's actually a R practice, uh, 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 publishing platform language called Shiny. I had a look at that. But I didn't want, to, didn't want to use it because it uh, wanted to package everything itself and not meant let me play under the hood. So I discounted that. Um, said it was like Dreamweaver, pretty much. Um, and then my other, the other thing that I'm familiar with is Node.js. So I thought, okay, let's, let's give it a go in Node.js. Um, interestingly, uh, JavaScript also codes a little bit like R. So if you actually, if you're a, um, if you're a JavaScript developer and you want to move into data science, the, the coding differences um, are actually aren't, aren't too large. So just as, a, just as an interesting topic, side topic. So first up, so what, this leads into my experiences. Um, first up, what I did was I went NPN shopping. I went for, I tried to find the best um, or the most appropriate machine learning package that I could. Um, I looked through a number of, uh, a number of uh, potential packages and then I decided on one called machine underscore learning. And the reason I chose this was because it, um, although it hasn't been developed for the last couple of years, it has a really good technique spread and some pretty good documentation um, and examples. So that was a, that gave me a really good um, head start. 
Um, other dependencies that um, this project will use are D3JS, DOM, and um, uh, FS for file system. That was for, um, for data loading. Uh, JS DOM was for the construction of the graphics that I used, and D, um, D3 was for the, the graph generation. Uh, in terms of the models tested, this is get, we're getting now into a little bit more technical details about machine learning, um, and I won't go into these in a huge amount of detail because it would take hours and hours, but I'll be looking at both a logistic regression model, which is essentially a linear classifier, and a multi-layer perceptron, which is an artificial neural network. Um, interestingly, on the artificial neural networks, um, I've, I've provided a really good example at the end of my um, at the end of my presentation that someone else has built, which gives you a really good explanation uh, on the internet, which is um, and lets you play with it too. Okay, let's look at let's look at uh, visualization comparison. So when I was when I first started this, I thought, okay, well, how does how does the uh, how does the visualizations I'm getting from R compare to that with JavaScript? So let's have a look at uh, one from R. Now this is a little bit a little bit contrived in that you can get better performance out of R using some of their packages, but this is the this is the default that you get from it. So not particularly pretty. I can't put this on the web because it's ugly. Um, it's not. Um, it's just a PNG. So it's not, not never going to scale. Um, so then, going to uh, going to JavaScript then in D3, I then get something that looks a little bit nicer. Apologies <coughs> to those people that are colorblind. Uh, um, but what I've actually done here is I've extended a really simple example that uh, I showed first up. And what I'm going to attempt to do in my project is to, if you see the, if you can see the little black crosses. If I can expand it. Um, if you can see the little black crosses, what I'm doing is I'm going to see if my machine learning algorithms can uh, classify those crosses correctly. So let's see if um, the top the one on the top left actually gets classed as a pear, the one in the middle as a peach, and the one down the bottom is an interesting one because it's right in the middle of four particular um, four particular classes. So I, I would have a clue how that's going to turn out. Um, Code demo. Okay, so that's so that's the um, that was my test case. So what I'm going to do now is just show you the co the code that's required to actually um, to to take those inputs and then uh, produce a result or produce a prediction. Okay. So this is my this is my logistic regression calculation, and um, most of this you'll, most of this will pick up pretty fast. The, the front section is just loading stuff in. Um, that loads in the, um, the, the actual data set, so the data set that, that was used for that chart, um, it's, that's in the JSON file. Um, some lookups, processing the JSON into an array, which gets fed into the, um, into the logistic regression model in this case. Um, it takes in and a, a few more parameters as well. Um, set your reporting level, set how many steps you're using, um, and then oh, set your uh, the, the the items that you're going to that you want a prediction for, so this this is representative of the four the three black crosses I showed earlier, and then uh, let it rip, see how it goes. Should we run it? Cross me shut. Um, so what I've actually done here is I've, I've essentially used Node as a more of a command line processor than a, um, something that's producing anything visually. So we'll just yeah. So that that's that's what it that's what it um, what it does when you when you run it uh, and. The result here, or what it's what it's predicted, is that um, the first the first cross was a pear, the second was a peach, and the third was a rock melon. So if we check that to make sure it's okay, then um, first is a pear, second was a peach, and the third one was a rock melon, which is actually part of this pink group. So yeah, not not a bad result, and not too not too shabby in terms of speed either. Like that's that's a fairly decent speed. 
Um, so that's that's logistic regression, and in, what we'll do now is we'll have a look at. Um, I've got a neural net um, example set up here as well. <coughs> um, this one takes a little bit uh, longer to run because essentially neural net, when you get down to it, uh, they're more like a um, it's more like a, a brute force type calculation rather than something that's um, something that's been optimized. So it takes a little bit longer. But we'll run that one too. That was actually really well timed. It's like the music for the, for the, for the processing. <laughs> Yeah, so this one, this one's finished running now as well. Um, and this one's telling us that uh, the first one was a pear, which is as expected. The second one is a mandarin, which is actually, is actually unexpected. And the last one was a, which is a blueberry, which is kind of expected. So the blueberry is the bottom right one. It's telling us the second one is actually a, um, a mandarin, which is actually up here. So I'm, un, I'm unsure what, what caused that behavior. I haven't investigated that yet, but the both, um, both R and my and my JavaScript model produce the same thing. So there's there's obviously that that model needs a little bit more tuning to get it to produce the the, the right result. Yeah. So what I, what I then did one of the things I wanted to do was work out um, how JavaScript performed compared to other tools. Um, so I did a comparison. Oh no, sorry, this is my calculation results. I've already seen this. Um, uh, yeah. This is. Um, uh, and JavaScript have pretty much produced results that are, are, are bang on. Um, and in, yeah, uh, yeah, interestingly, both both um, produce that Mandarin result. Um, this is what I was going to talk about. Um, calculation time. So, in terms of calculation time, this was kind of a little bit expected, but not not tragic. Like when I first started, I thought, okay, here, what I'm actually doing is comparing a, a statistical tool that's been developed for 20 years against something that probably wasn't really developed. For with the intention of running machine learning algorithms through it, um, but it's it's like not it's not too shabby. Um, so for example, the um, the R calculation was um, 0.12 of a second. JavaScript was 1.7 seconds. Although that timing was when I left the um, the logging on, so that gets pen that penalizes a little bit by about by about a third. So you lose a third of that time when you turn the logging off. Um, and neural net com time comparison was actually that's actually a pretty good that's a pretty good comparison like that it's not it's nothing as neither yeah conclusions um so uh, the, in terms of JS um, using JS the machine learning uh, model accuracy is on par so it produces um, results that they would expect um, JS requires more code. Um, a relatively longer time to calculate, and I say kind of when it requires more code, because um, it's some of the some of the packages that you have need to include into statistical into statistical languages are actually there's a, a quite a lot of code behind that anyway. And it's just it's almost like R is just missing maybe five years worth of development where people have abstracted out certain um, certain techniques to be able to, to fully optimize the code. Um, so I wouldn't, I'd never um, prototype a machine learning model in JS, but I'd definitely publish with it. Um, all the graphs that I, all the graphs that I showed um, were done, were generated using um, using D3. Um, and the last one, which is actually, it, it shits me to tears. It's um, when I'm developing stuff in R, I have to use really old school um, development and, I, um, and programming tools. I have to use something called R Studio. And then I go to code in JS and I'm using IntelliJ and Sublime and it's so much easier to use. So um, that's it. Um, I thought I'd point that out as well if you have to do it. Uh, yeah, in terms of future in terms of future work that I was I was thinking about doing at the end of this end of this little mini project, uh, you can actually uh, you can actually outsource uh, things to R using an NPM package called RScript. I think that you'd actually get the best of both worlds then because then you can you can out kind of outsource all your all your numerical processing to R, bring it back in, and then visualize it using using JavaScript. Um, uh, in terms of speeding things up, especially if you've got if you're calculating multiple things at a time, 
Uh, there's an NPM package called Web Worker Threads. What that allows you to do is parallelize, parallelize your code so you can calculate multiple things at once. Um, uh, and yeah, it's not JavaScript related, but um, you can use a, there's a R package that uses SVG. Um, if you want to look up a cool example, I'll make the slides available on my GitHub uh, repo. Um, I might just show that now. Have a good time. Oops. Maybe I won't show that now. Okay, I won't show that, but the, the link's there. And what that actually is, is that's, a, um, that's a, a neural net example where you can visually play with all the parameters that go into the model and then look at what results get produced out of it. It's a really good, um, really good blurb on that side as well. Um, and oh yeah, that's it. If you, uh, if you need a hotspot for that example, well, I'm sure we can accommodate it. If that helps. I know why it doesn't work. <coughs> I think your Wi-Fi is connected again now. It does. Why not go with indicate again? Car insurance, but I can't open the inside. <laughs> Surprisingly, good one. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yay! Yeah, so there we go. So that's, if you want to play with neural networks, that's, that's a really good place to do it. In fact, that's actually a really good use case for, um, for machine learning in the browser when you're actually doing it in the browser. If you want, say, for example, if you're looking at building educational tools. Um, or if you're or if you're building something which relies relies heavily on, on user input um, across a broad, a broad user base, then um, this is, this would be a good, really good way to do it. Yeah. Cool. What do you uh, What do you see? What if you could pick anything? What would you be your project to do with Node.js instead of R? What, what visual aspect, what kind of neural network aspect would you apply that would be your killer app? My killer app? Um, well, okay, what I would actually do is, is build a, if I had unlimited time, I'd build my own IDE, which, which was, or I'd use something to make it, make it easy to program, um, e easy to program um, in machine learning, because that, that's one of the big, that's one of the big problems that I had um, developing developing um, code in R is that it's not particularly user friendly. Uh, no, no auto completions. Um, the binary you can't you can't refactor particularly well. Um, so that that would be what I'd do. <laughs> Make my job easier. Other questions? Actually, be cool as well. It kind of a second answer to your question. Kind of answer to yours is like, have like a like an RD3 package. That would be cool. Like not bypassing Shiny altogether. I don't use Shiny. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about data analysis or everything, but it seems that like your examples are pretty simple, but the results were not the same. So. Which was the same thing? Your results. Yes. You say the model is pretty much the same, but it's not the same. So why is that? Oh, um, the the neural, sorry, the neural net, the neural net process. Um, that's easily answerable because that's that's 
if you think of the algorithm behind neural nets, they're actually, it's actually more of a trial and error process. So some of the result depends a little bit on the seeds that are used in the start of that process. So it's possible that you'll get slightly different results, mainly because of the, um, the, the starting seed difference. So like an RNG difference in Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, um, in terms of the logistic regression, um, the reasoning behind that, I, I think that I haven't looked into that one, but I think that one is just due to the different models that are used. Like logistic regression, regression actually covers quite a number of like there's quite a number of models that you can actually use that are classed underneath that um, in that tree. So it's probably just a, a slightly different implementation of that one. Any questions to round this up? Don't be shy. Things are interesting in that UI remote. <coughs> Intelligent has released a free interface to a quantum computer, and you can write your own quantum computer programs on it and run them on an actual real physical quantum computer. And it has an interface that's similar to that. I mean, that's what it reminds me. Um, but I just thought it was really cool, and I thought, I don't know, maybe you guys would be interested too. Um, if you watch the video about how to write quantum computer programs, if you're anything like me, you'll have no fucking idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. what's, it, what's it called? Uh, just, I don't know, do a Google search for like Intel quantum computer online. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, right, so I just wanted to shout out to some other meetups. So um, if anyone else is interested in this data visualization stuff, there's a hacks to hackers meetup. So the idea is it's all about um, data journalism. That one's on the, um, the Wednesday after next. And they've got a, um, a web scraping expert who's gonna come in and do a like tutorial on uh, web scraping. And the one that I'm actually involved with is the uh, Brisbane Internet Safety Meetup. So we're, our whole um, mantra is that tools like VPNs and Tor and even ad blockers are somehow associated with like criminals. But our whole thing is it's not about criminals using that. Those are actually useful tools that regular people can use like us. So our whole thing is making tools like that more accessible. We do uh, workshops on them. Um, and this, uh, so the first day after next, we're doing a mobile phone security workshop. So we're doing things about um, how phones get hacked and uh, secure messaging. Like many of you, you will have seen uh, WhatsApp getting end-to-end -end encryption. And they cover a bit about that and what, what that means. Um, uh, encryption of your phone, uh, everything about protecting your phone, basically. And that's the Thursday after next up at the Full Works office in the city. So, internet safety. Fantastic. All right. Well, we've had a, a whole bunch of really interesting topics today. So, thank you very much to our speakers. Thanks very much for the shout out. That's really useful. Um, hopefully, you can all get along to that. Um, we'll, we'll try and add that, uh, add some links to Bridge.js yeah, meetup page. Yeah, that's all, I'll post some there. Yep, cool. Same with the Angular Hack Day, you should get on board with that. And uh, you should chat with this gentleman and try and set up your own neural networks in JavaScript and try and improve on that. So, uh, thanks very much for coming everyone. Sorry about the snafu with the pizza. Uh, you know, we, we do our best. We try and order it in time, but we'll have to order it earlier. Um, so, thanks very much for bearing with us on that one. Um, uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you all at the next one. Um, I guess I'll leave it there. Thanks very much again. Thank you.